<clears throat> hey there so it's Kathy I'm um, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and um, if you're familiar with me you know I do YouTube not YouTube Facebook live videos on Mondays and Fridays and then I post them to YouTube so then they're on Monday um, afternoon and Friday morning you can find my videos on YouTube and now I took the week off from Christmas so I'm not it's not Monday or Friday it's Sunday but Really, my days are all messed up because of Christmas anyway, so I decide I'm going to do an extra video. I'll still do one tomorrow, but I wanted to show you um, a birthday card that I'm making today. In fact, I'm making a bunch of them because due to Christmas, I'm a little bit late for the last or the end of December birthday cards, and I think I need like 10. So I um, got this card from Wanda Williams. She's an awesome stamper, and she gave me this card for my birthday right? It looks like this. I think it's a very simple, but yet it has a lot of wow factors. So I want to do something like this. However, I don't have the ornate garden. I believe these are the ornate garden framelits. I don't have those. So I wanted to come up with something that looked like this, that was simple, but a wow of stuff that I had. So I came up with this card. And so now this one uses the um, celebration label dies. And now they're on the um, discount rack or whatever Stampin' Up! sale. Let me see what it's called here. Oh, that's not it. That's a receipt. Maybe I don't have... Oh, here it is right here. The giant year-end closeout. So they might even be um, sold out and you can't get them anymore. And honestly, they might even be on markdown. But I don't know. But the whole point of the video is to take something that you really like but don't have the supplies for and turn it into something that you like that you do have the supplies for. So, let's so I'm trying to show what we're going to what we're going to use. So we're going to use the Whisper White cardstock and now so you know stamping up um the our stamp Whisper White di <laughs> our Whisper White distributor has gone out of business due to COVID. So Stampin' Up! is now going to sell products and that they're called the Basic White products. And as of yesterday, they're still not in stock, but they will be soon. So if you're out of Whisper White cardstock, hang on, I'll let you know as soon as the stock comes in and you can get some more Basic White products from Stampin' Up! And you can find this flyer on my online store at kathyhouse.stampinup.net and it explained about all the Whisper White um, products and the changes and stuff. We're also going to use Rich Razzleberry cardstock and a little bit of Seaside Spray cardstock and then we're going to use the Plaid Tidings Designer Series paper. Now this too is on the, um, the sale and the closeout so when it's gone it's gone but um we're gonna use what you have in stock anyway so it's not a it's not a worry this is the pattern that i like so this is the pattern we're going to use and we need to cut this down to three and three fourths by five so i'm going to cut it first at three and three fourths here and five right there and then the, what I'm gonna do this piece is gonna be our card front this is a scrap we don't need and this piece here I'm gonna take one of Stampin' Up's Whisper White envelopes here let me see if I can find one I have a few here we go and I'm gonna just put adhesive I like to use my seal and when you use your seal when you run it here, you take it at the end, you flick it back. See how I did my wrist? Let me show you again. You take it here and then flick it back, and then that way it breaks the tape and it keeps it running and you don't have any problems because sometimes the seal, because it's new and we're not used to using it, but you run it here and then flick it back and you won't have trouble with your seal anymore. Okay, so I have adhesive on the flap of my envelope and then I'm gonna just add my scrap here of designer series paper and then with a pair of paper snips I'm going to just cut that around the edge and 
there we go. And now our envelope is all done and ready to go. So like I talked about, now I can't find any of my paper scraps. Here they all are. So my seaside spray is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a fourth. It's just your simple card base. I'm gonna use my bone folder to get a nice crisp edge there. Let me put everything away. I tend to leave everything out and then I'm working in a mess. And that's a, maybe it'd be a New Year's resolution. No, I doubt it. My designer series paper we have cut here at three and three fourths by five. The rich razzleberry is um, five and a fourth by four, but we're gonna just put a little bit of adhesive on the back of that designer series paper and then lay that right there on my rich razzleberry. And then a little bit of adhesive on the back of that and lay that on the front of our base. And then I do have a, a white piece of cardstock here that is four inches by five and a fourth, and we're gonna stamp on that and put that in the inside later. So now for the front here, I have a piece of cardstock, and you can see that I've cut one of the um, die pieces out of there, but I'm gonna bring in my Stamparatus. So I have, I'm using red rubber stamps. The stamp set is called Happiest of Birthdays. And since I'm late, I'm gonna use this happy little bit late birthday. And like I said, they're red rubber. So I have my platform of my Stamparatus. Let me move my magnet. I'm going to use a piece of grid paper. And now my um, magnet is gonna hold that just for now. And I'm gonna lay my paper down here. There, let me hold that with my magnet because I don't have my, for some reason I don't have my sticky, sticky grid paper. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go watch some of my previous videos. Usually I put sticky grid paper on my grid paper and it's a long, you have to go back and watch my videos. But then I'm gonna just take a ballpoint pen or some kind of pen and draw along the corners of my cardstock. This way, when I put it back on there, I'll know where it goes. And I've done this technique before in my video, so you can go back and watch them again if I don't explain it exactly what I'm doing here. But now I have my paper. I want to put it in the middle because I have to have room for my die cut around it. So I'm going to lay it about there and then attach my plate. Oh, and then I moved everything. Come on, sister. Okay, there we go. Lay my plate down, pick up my stamp, make sure my paper doesn't move. Then with my markers, I'm going to take Seaside Spray, the same color as my paper, and I'm gonna just quickly color that little, um, a little bit late. And now the reason, the main reason I'm gonna use my stamp Stamparatus is with the markers, I like to usually stamp it twice to get really good coverage, but I'm gonna do a bunch of these. Like I said, I think I need about 10 to 12 cards that I'm late. I need to send out before the end of the month. And um, this way it makes them fast and easy and I can restamp and get those nice and dark. See how dark that is now? Now I'm gonna come back with the rich razzleberry and just color the happy birthday. Try not to get that little part of the a little bit late in the inside of my stamp. And this probably is the longest part, the card. But it's well worth it, I think. I like having the two-tone. And with the Stamparatus, you can lay it down twice and get it really nice and dark and good coverage. And if you're on YouTube, you can fast forward. almost done here. I like using kind of the side of my marker so that way it doesn't um, mess up the tip of this is the paintbrush side and that way um, yeah, you have the best of both worlds. Let's lay that down. There we go one more well here let me get a little more pressure right here. There we go. Now one more time
Just get all that birthday. I'm almost done. There we go. And then lay that down again. Now this time I'm going to look and see, did I miss any corners, any edges, is I'm happy? I think right here on my happy, I missed a little bit of the H. I'm going to do that again, and there. And now I think that looks pretty good. So then I'm going to take this piece, right? I mean, not this piece, I'm going to keep my paper there, and I'm going to stamp down. Come on, paper, still here, put the magnets back on there. And stamp down where that happy birthday is. Just so now when I put it back in there, I can see it's a really light, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But I'll show you why you need that now. Then I'm going to bring in my mini cut and emboss machine. Let me show you real quick too. So if you use your plates a lot and sometime we get sticky smudges and they leave um, like, I guess I'll say adhesive on your cardstock and stuff and they're dirty, I just take these little alcohol prep pads and um, take it out there and just clean up my plate a little bit and make sure that there's no adhesive, especially when I'm working with Whisper White because I don't want any glue or ink or anything that might happen to be on my plate to get onto my Whisper White paper. So those little alcohol prep, now this is a Curad, I think I got them at Walmart, but you can find them all over, they're really cheap and they're really nice and fast to use, and they get the adhesive off your plate so it doesn't get on to your paper. That's just a suggestion. So then I'm gonna take with my dies here. Oh, and look, I've already cut the rich razzleberry, so you don't have to watch me. I can't get it out of there, but do that. But I'm gonna take the, it's, I guess it's the second to smallest of the dies and just cut out that happy birthday. that look pretty good right about there keeps moving on me then that top plate that's nice and clean now won't get any grimies on my paper run that through there put him away because I think I've run all the other pieces through and you don't have to watch me run pieces through the die cut machine anymore and which by the way the um, mini emboss and die cut machine will be available January 5th from Stampin' Up. And it comes with the machine, which is much smaller than the other one, the standard one. It comes with two. These are for the embossing folder plates. They're all numbered and they have the instructions right there on the front. It comes with the platform, which is number one, and it comes with two, number two, which are the clear cutting pads. So it comes with everything you need. It's a little bit smaller, easier to handle, a lot easier to store. It's just a great little thing, the um, mini emboss machine. So, so you know that also in this die, there's these two little hearts and now I've taken and cut a bunch of little hearts out with the seaside spray. And I've also cut out the um, shape that's a little bit bigger than the die that we used with the Whisper White. So we'll use those on our card as well. Okay, so back to this piece. Let's find the Stamparatus again. And I set it someplace very safe because now I can't find where I, oh, right here, duh. Okay, bring this in again. Now I'm gonna put my paper back in this corner where I set it down, right? And this is if you're making multiple cards. Then I'm gonna hold this paper down and I know that that's exactly where it's gonna stamp and I've cut a bunch of little white ones with the same die, but this way you can cut out a bunch lay them in that hole, ink up your stamp like I did again, and then just keep stamping them. And it goes a lot faster when you're trying to do a bunch of um, cards than just doing the one. Now, I won't make you watch me stamp and um, 
all my extra cards again because we have what we need. But that's in case you're trying to do a bunch of them and it's easier just to cut out plain white ones and then place them in that template on your die cut machine. But let's, let's go on. So on the back of the white, I'm gonna put a little bit of seal again using the flick back with the wrist and layer that right on there and then a few dimensionals and it looks like I have black dimensionals on my table today so I like to put one in the center so that this this my I call it my tummy doesn't sag but so the center of my sentiment doesn't sag we'll go ahead and lay that right here on the front of our card And there we go. Now all we need is a couple glue dots. I'm gonna take my little hearts here and just lay them right there on the roll. Now, if you're wondering why I have this ribbon on my glue dots, and this way it holds the paper down, then I just pull the paper back and expose one glue dot at a time. And it makes it easier for me to see where I'm at on the roll and I don't waste glue dots that way. But then I'm gonna use my take a pick tool. I think it's easier to get those glue dots off and put these right on your card. Whoop. One. And then this one we'll put right there. And then one more little heart, right? Maybe there, there we go. And look how cute that is. And it doesn't take too long. But then last and not least, now we need to stamp on the inside of our card. And I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek of an upcoming celebration stamp set. It's called Approaching Perfection. And it has little cute birthday sayings on there. Now I like this one, New Flash. Birthdays found to be good for health studies show that people who have more birthdays live longer. So that's what I'm gonna use on the inside of my card. And now stamps come this way. I'll show you how I put my sticker onto my stamps. So I've already taken the white backing off of my stamp. I need a block. Here it is. I have a block here. But I'm gonna go ahead and take my sticker, the whole thing. So you see how I've taken the sticky part off, the black, all of this off, and I'm gonna just set it right here on my block. Right? Then with my take a pick tool, which now I've put away. Oh, brother. Where did it? I don't think I can get it off without my take a pick tool. And my take a pick tool went where? Did anybody see where I put my... Okay, well, I have to use my scissors because I... Th oh, here, I put it in my basket. My bad. Okay. So with my take a pick tool, very carefully so I don't tear the sticker that goes on the um, stamp... I'm gonna take those paper backings off. And then bring in my stamp and just hover above it until I can see exactly where that sticker goes. And then press down. And now you have your sticker just perfect on my very dirty block. I should take my um, alcohol wipes and clean my blocks. But anyway, that's how you get. And then to take it off, I just kind of roll it at the corner and roll my stamp off because the cling mount sticks so well, it's not even funny. Then on the inside, with a little bit of rich Razzleberry ink, well, and my ink pad's not here, so I'm gonna just color it. Maybe I'll, um, since I'm using my markers, I'm gonna, I should have used my stamp rata so I could do it twice, but I'm gonna, just color the words here. There we go. And then color the news flash with the seaside spray. And then a little bit of huffing or Darth Vader. I'm going to lay this down right here on the inside of my card. There you go.
not too shabby. A little bit of um, adhesive on the back. And then just lay that on the inside of my card. Now I hope that my video today has showed you that you can take ideas and use what you have on hand to make cards that you really like. So you don't have to go out and buy everything. You can use what you have. Now if there is product you want, of course I would love to be your demonstrator. As I said before, my um, online store is kathyhouse.stampinup.net or you can visit my blog for all the measurements for my cards. That's um, becreatedwithkathy.com. I'll be back tomorrow with a Valentine card like I promised a long time ago and um, Friday again with another card and back on my schedule. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.